This is video two of round one of our series Curators Cornered, which is already proving to be more complicated to release than we actually thought. Basic gist is we set two British Museum curators against each other with one question. And this week, that question is, what's the best ostentatiously decorated, otherwise mundane object that you're in charge of? You should have, by now, already seen Sue's wonderful take on this from early medieval Britain. However, in this video, you're going to see its equivalent, its counter-argument, delivered by our wonderful curator of ancient Mesopotamia, Gareth Brereton, and his... Well, I can't actually tell you because he wants you to guess it at the beginning. Hello all. So first of all, I'm going to describe the object and give you a chance to guess its purpose. So the object in question is nearly a meter in length, made from alternating cylinders of gold and a blue stone called lapis lazuli, which enclosed a long, hollow silver tube. Any guesses? Well, it's a straw, a drinking straw, and it was used for drinking beer in ancient Mesopotamia. So the earliest chemical evidence for beer production in Mesopotamia dates from over 5,000 years ago, though it is likely that beer was produced even earlier. Ancient beer was rich in carbohydrates, proteins and vitamins, and was generally safer to drink than water. Along with bread, beer became a dietary staple for much of the population and was produced on a massive scale. While some beers described in ancient texts as being filtered or strained, most beer probably included some solid matter. And as I'm sure you will agree, the ancient Mesopotamians did not quite like chewing their beer. They would rather it be filtered so they can drink it pleasantly. For this reason, people in ancient Mesopotamia drank beer through straws, which helped filter out the barley husks and stalks that would float on the surface. So this straw, as I hope you can see, is much bigger than the straws that we use today. I mean, this example is about a meter in length. And that's because drinking was a shared experience. One of the earliest depictions of Mesopotamian beer drinking was found at a site called Tepe Gaura in northern Iraq. And this dates to around 6,000 years ago. And it shows two standing individuals either side of a large pottery jar drinking from long straws. And these were large storage vessels. And you can see that from the scale of these vessels and the depictions compared to the individuals. And so they needed these long straws to dip into the pots where they could happily share their beer together. Originally, these straws were made of nothing more than reeds. Much of southern Iraq is marshland, so reeds were very common. This ornate example is 4,500 years old and was excavated from the site of Ur in southern Iraq. Now, Ur was an important Mesopotamian city that was originally located very close to the Persian Gulf. The site was excavated by Sir Leonard Woolley in the 1920s and 30s on behalf of the British Museum and the University of Pennsylvania Museum. During his excavations, Woolley discovered a large cemetery containing around 2,000 ancient graves. And in one area of the cemetery was a distinctive group of 16 graves featuring stone-built tombs located at the bottom of deep pits. And these were surrounded and packed full of spectacular objects made from precious materials and exotic stones. They included things like gaming boards, cosmetic sets, weaponry, and elaborate jewellery. This particular beer straw was found in the tomb of a queen. The large pit next to the queen's burial chamber held the remains of over 20 individuals, including guards with bronze daggers and ornately dressed attendants found with musical instruments, like harps and lyres. And in the centre of this pit was a huge decorated wooden chest. According to Woolley's excavation notes, this straw lay next to the chest, with one end bent down into a large silver pot. The spectacular wealth associated with these tombs suggests that they were used to bury the city's elite residents, some of whom were kings and queens. So in this context, the humble, reed-built straw was elevated, and the conspicuous consumption of beer using ornate drinking straws and vessels suggests that feasting and drinking was used in important rituals and social occasions where the city's elite rulers could show off their wealth and power. And these elaborate banquets are actually shown in contemporary depictions, some of which are actually found in the tombs. And they generally show people sitting on chairs either side of large vessels, merrily drinking their beer from these long straws. Unlike other curators, I'm not going to beg for your vote. But I will say this. Have you ever put much thought into a straw? Probably not. 
It's just a useful thing for while you're drinking. So when I was given the challenge of thinking up the most lavishly decorated, otherwise mundane object, I thought this elaborate drinking straw was a good contender. I mean, look, this straw is 4,500 years old. It is one meter in length. It is made of gold, lapis lazuli from Afghanistan, and solid silver. It was found in association with a silver vessel in a tomb full of rich grave goods that belonged to a queen. And according to the Mesopotamian Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the world's oldest literary texts, beer drinking, along with food and sex, is part of what makes us human. But perhaps most importantly, according to a Sumerian hymn to the goddess of beer, Ninkasi, drinking beer makes the liver happy and fills the heart with joy. That's a really big straw. If you thought it was an award-winning straw, give this video a like, that's how the voting system works. If you haven't yet seen Sue's video, it means you watch these in the wrong order, but that's fine by me. You can watch it here. And other than that, vote for one, vote for both. Don't vote for neither. They put a lot of effort into this, as did I. Look at this shirt. Like, I practically ironed it.